All right, guys, welcome to your study guide help video for our Unit 7 Quiz 1. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go through all the problems this time. Um, and you guys can uh, follow along. And I don't intend you guys to watch this entire video. I just intend you guys to watch the parts that you need help with, OK? So let's go ahead and get started. So number one, this is simplifying a rational expression that's a monomial. And whenever you're doing these, you just reduce the coefficients like you normally would. So the biggest thing I can think of that goes into 42 and 18 is 6. So if you divide 42 by 6, you get 7. And if you divide 18 by 6, you get 3. So we have that. And then we need to reduce the v's. So we have v to the fourth over v squared. And the way you do that is you subtract those exponents. So 4 minus 2 is 2. So it's going to be v to the second power. And it's going to go on the top because you put the answer wherever the biggest power was to begin with. And so my final answer here would be A. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So this is the same question, but with a different type of problem. We're still simplifying it, but it's not monomials, it's polynomials. So when you're dealing with polynomials, you have to factor. Okay. So for the top, the first thing I would do if I wanted to factor that top is I would take out a GCF. All three of those terms can be divided by 2. Okay, after that, we have some trinomials. Trinomials are factored using the box method. Okay, so um, I'll do one of the boxes just to kind of refresh your memory on it. I'll do the bottom one. So the box method for the bottom would look like this. You would put your 2n squared here and your 27 here. And you would look for two things that multiply together to make 2n squared. And two things that multiply together to make 27. And then we would fill in the rest of our box. And it's trial and error. We'll know that we're right if these two things can somehow combine to give me um, the middle number, which is what I'm trying to get to. Now, 18 and 3, that, that's only going to work if we have a negative 18 and a positive 3. But that's not possible. Because if this is negative, that, mean, that would mean this has to be negative. And if that's negative, this would have had to have been negative. So that's no good. Um, so 18 and 3 aren't going to work. You're either going to get a positive um, 21 or you're going to get a negative 21. But you, you're not going to be able to get um, anything out of that. So what else can we do here? How about switching the 9 and the 3 around? I'm going to put the 9 here and the 3 here. Let's see if that works. That gives me a 6 in there and a 9 in there. Now that's going to work because that gives me a positive 15, which can be changed if I just make both of these negatives. So in this case, it comes out to be on the bottom there, 2n minus 9 and then minus 3. Now on the top, I took out a GCF of 2. And for this one, you do the box again. I'm not going to show my work for that one. But if you did the box, you would end up with this. So the first step is to factor, and that's completely done now. The next step is to cancel whatever they have in common. And whatever remains is the answer. And so we could see from this that the answer would be B. All right, multiplication. Multiplication is pretty similar to what we just did. Um, you factor and you cancel. If you want, you could even do an additional beginning step, which is where you take the numerators and you put them together as one numerator. and the denominators together. But after that, we still need to factor. So um, the only thing that can be factored here is this guy. And it's another box method problem. So
Okay. So let's see. I'm just going to do some quick guess and check in my head here real quick. See if this works out right. 21 and 10 is the... Okay, there we go. That works. So if you do the box method to that trinomial that I boxed there, um, you end up with that. And then here they cancel. And so we're left with just 7v squared as our final answer. So with multiplication, it's really the same steps. You're just factoring and canceling. Division is pretty similar. It's just that before you begin, you do same change flip. So same change flip. Okay. The next step is to factor. And so if I factor this, I can see on this piece here I can take out a 2b. Same thing here, because it's identical actually. And then whatever's on the top and bottom that match, you can just cross them off so those go away and I'm left with this. And by the way, on this problem, if you're not too stuck to steps and just kind of willing to think outside the box for a second here, um, we didn't really need to factor. Since these two things matched already, you could just cancel them off right from the very beginning. So that's a possibility. But I'm just sticking to my steps because a lot of times um, it's not that convenient. So technically, after you do same change flip, you're supposed to factor and then you cancel. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one here. Moving on to addition and subtraction. So when it comes to addition and subtraction, they need to have a common denominator. And so in this case, they already do. And that's really nice when that happens. Because then all you have to do is take your numerators and combine them together. And put them over that one common denominator. So we have m plus m, which is 2m and negative 6 plus 2, which is negative 4. Now at this point, I would stop and see if my answer is there. But if it's not, then I would have to factor and, and see if I can reduce. Um, but I do see my answer there. So there's no point in going any further. But technically, if you didn't see this answer here, I would say try to go a little bit further. You know, try factoring a little bit. And see if anything cancels. But as you can see, even if I factored this expression, nothing cancels. And so that's why they left it that way. But I'd say after you get through that first step, go ahead and stop there and look and see if your answer is somewhere there before you do any extra work that you may not even need to do. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number six. Now, in number six, this is an example where we do not have a common denominator. And this is an example with monomials. So with monomials, all you need to do first is multiply to match. So this side, I would start by multiplying the top and the bottom by an A. That way, both of the denominators have a 2 and an A. So now that they have a common denominator, we can combine the numerators. It's going to be this minus that. But once again, um, now I don't see that answer anywhere here. I don't know about you guys, but in, in case you haven't noticed, that answer is not really anywhere up there. So we have a problem. The problem is, is that, well, we might be able to factor and cancel. Now on the top, we can take out a GCF. They both have an A in common. So I'm going to take an A out of this expression. And by taking out that A, this cancels out and it leaves me with this. Now, I don't know why they chose to write the answer backwards here, but this is the same thing. Positive 5b and a negative 6 on the top. They just wrote it backwards, but that's the final answer there, so it would be b. 
Here's another example of an uncommon denominator, but this time we're dealing with um, polynomials instead of just monomials. Like this is a monomial, but this is a polynomial. It's got two terms. It's actually what we call a binomial. So for those ones, if possible, you want to start by factoring the denominators. But in this case, the b minus 1 doesn't factor, so we can skip that step. So now what we do is we do the same step we did last time, which is multiply to match. So I'm going to take this b minus 1, and I'm going to put it over here, just like that. And whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So now both fractions have a b minus 1. But this, the other side needs a 6 and a b. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6b. After you do that, you're going to go ahead and simplify the numerators a little bit. So here I'm going to distribute the 6 into the parentheses to get 6b minus 6. I'm trying to make my 6s look a lot different than my b's. That's a little bit confusing. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to distribute in the bottom. Here we can just multiply that together and get 18b squared. All right, and then now that we have a common denominator, we're just going to go ahead and combine these. Now, personally, whenever I combine these together, there's no like terms. So I'm just going to put the one with the biggest power in the front, followed by the next one that has power of 1. Now, I would stop here and see if that answer is anywhere in there. And unfortunately, I don't see it there. So that means we do need to factor. So if you don't see your answer there, you're going to have to factor a little bit. So let's start by taking out a 6. On the top, all three of those terms have a 6 that I can divide out. So if I do that, I'm going to end up having 6 on the outside. I'll be left with 3b squared in the front here. And then 6b divided by 3 is going to leave 2b. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not taking out 3. I'm taking out 6. So 6 divided by 6 leaves 1b. And then 6 divided by 6 leaves 1. All right. And then these 6s cancel. And once again, before I start trying to do the box and the top, I'm going to stop and see if I see my answer, because I don't want to do more work than I have to. Now, do I have a 3b squared plus b minus 1 over b times b minus 1? I do. And once again, I really don't know why they're writing these things out of order, but this is the same answer. It's just they've arranged the terms in the numerator a little bit differently. But there you have it. All right, so let's move on to number eight. So on this quiz, you'll also be asked to deal with complex fractions. And what we talked about with those is you multiply the, hold on, let me change my color. You multiply the numerator and the denominator of the big fraction by the denominators of the little fraction. So I'm going to start by multiplying by four on the top and bottom here. And for the top, they cancel, leaving me with 3. And on the bottom, 4 times 2 is 8 over m. Now I'm going to multiply the top of my big fraction and the bottom of my big fraction by the other little denominator here, m, which leaves me with 3m over those cancel, leaving me with 8. So 3m over 8 is a final answer. Sometimes you have to reduce these, but you can't reduce that one. But just be aware of that fact. Here's another one. Same thing. It's just a binomial. Um, let's go ahead and see how this one works out. So I would multiply the top and the bottom of the big fraction by a denominator. In this case, 
I'm going to multiply them both by x plus 1 first. Let's try that. So here these cancel out, and I'm left with x minus 2 on the bottom. And on the top, I have x plus 1 over x. Now I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of the big fraction by x. So those cancel out. This x needs to be distributed to both terms, and so you'll be left with x plus 1 on the top and x squared minus 2x on the bottom, and so that gives us answer b. More complex fractions. This one happens to have three terms in it. Um, you're going to want to start, when you have a lot of them, you want to start make sure you multiply by the one that's going to cancel the most stuff out. So if you multiply everything by this little denominator here, you're going to cancel more out than if you were to multiply by anything else. So I'm going to start by multiplying the top and the bottom by 8 over 1. Now on the bottom, um, 8 times 16, that's a pretty big number. What is that? I think it's 128 over x. On the top, you need to distribute this 8 to both, so it would look like this. Now these cancel out, and this is what I have as a result, x squared minus, and we have 8x squared over 4, over 128 over x. But this one can actually be reduced, so we don't have to multiply by 4 now to cancel out that denominator because 8 over 4 reduces anyway to a point where you don't even have a fraction anyway. Um, 8 over 4 reduces to 2. And it saves us a little bit of time if you can catch that. And as you guys can see, we have some like terms here, so go ahead and combine them. That will also save us a little bit of work. So any kind of simplifying you can do will make it a little bit easier. It's not that you wouldn't get it right if you didn't go in the same exact order that I'm going in. It's just that some, some routes you might take are a little bit longer than others. But I still have a complex fraction. I still have a top and a bottom of a big fraction, and one of those parts of the fraction are still a fraction. So I want to get rid of this fraction in the bottom, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x over 1 now. Now on the top, I end up getting negative x cubed, and on the bottom, these cancel, leave me with 128. So we have negative x cubed, or 128, which is option A. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at solving equations now. So when you're solving equations, step one is to factor the denominator, unless your denominators are monomials. And, and that's what we have here. These are all monomials, so I don't need to factor these. Um, but what I will do is we'll go ahead and start moving on to step two. Step two is to multiply the entire equation by what, whichever one of the denominators will end up canceling out the most stuff. And in this case, that would be 4a. So you can distribute that in. Now, after you distribute it in, it's going to look like this. And then we're going to cancel whatever we can. So like these cancel, leaving 3. The a's cancel, and 2 goes into 4 twice. So we'll be left with 2a plus 6. And here the a's cancel, leaving me with 2 times 4, which is 8. And then from there, we're just going to simplify and solve. So this is step 3 of the process. A equals negative one half, and once again, you want to make sure that it doesn't make any of your denominators come out to equal zero. 
and it doesn't, so we have a good answer there. Go ahead and move on to the next one here. All right. Um, so this one doesn't have monomials in the denominator, it has polynomials, and when that's the case, you do have to do the first step, which is to factor the denominators. You don't need to factor the numerators, just the denominators. So if you take out an R on the bottom, you'd be left with R plus 6. So that's step one. I factored by taking out a GCF out of the denominators, um, the first one and the second one there. All right, the next thing is we move into step two, which is multiplying everything by the denominator that will cancel out the most stuff. That would be r times r plus 6. I'm going to multiply that right on into there, and that's going to look like the following. And we cancel out whatever they have in common first, so those go away, leaving me with this. These go away, leaving me with 1. And then this goes away, leaving me with 1 times r, which is just r. Then we simplify and solve, so 4r and then 4 take away 1 is 3. And a minus the 4r on both sides. And that leaves me with 3 equals negative 3r. Division will give me negative 1. Now I know that this is a good answer without having to check it. And the reason I know it's a good answer is because, as you guys can see on a multiple choice test, if they don't give you one of the answers, it's no solution then you know that the answer you got has to be good if you did everything correctly. So I know the answer has to be negative 1. Now, if one of my choices said no solution, I would have to go back and double check this to make sure it doesn't make the denominators equal 0, though. All right, I've got another one here, another equation to solve. Let's try this one out. Uh, the 4 is not a fraction, but that's easily fixed. I'm just going to put it over 1 there. I can't factor any of these denominators, so I'm just going to move on to step two, which is to multiply everything by the denominator to cancel the most stuff. And that's going to give me the following. And we cancel out what they have in common. Oops. This is why parentheses are important, because it reminds you to do distribution. If you don't have parentheses, you'll miss that, probably. Find my like terms there. We've moved on to step three, which is simplifying and solving. And I know it's a good answer once again because there's no option up there that says no solution. So the answer I got, so long as it's there, must be the one. All right, let's go ahead and do another one. I think this is our last one. All right, um, whenever you see it, there's two answers possible. 
Um, chances are this is one where you're going to end up having a quadratic that you have to solve with either the quadratic equation or with factoring. So first of all, I'll put that over 1. And step 1 is to factor the denominators. But as you guys can see, none of these denominators will factor. So this is an interesting problem. Let's go ahead and try it out. So we want to multiply by the thing that's going to cancel the most stuff out. But the unfortunate thing is none of them are going to cancel out more than the other. And so I'll show you guys something kind of interesting here. I'm going to start by multiplying everything by v minus 6 first. Now if I do that, I'm going to have the following. And then I'm going to cancel stuff out. Now only this cancels out. And as you guys can see, I really still have a problem. We haven't had, I, at least for the examples I've done in class, I, I haven't seen ones where this has happened yet. And what's happened is, is that even though I did my multiplication, I still have a denominator I need to get rid of. And that can happen. Um, sometimes there isn't a best denominator to multiply by that will just get rid of everything. And in this case, we didn't have one. So when that happens, if you still have a denominator left over after you multiply, that just means you got to do it again. So now I'm going to multiply everything by v. Now I'm going to try to save myself a little bit of time here. So instead of rewriting this whole thing, I'm just going to put a v next to this, next to this, and next to this, instead of rewriting it. So there we go. And now these are going to cancel out leaving me with this little binomial times this binomial. This is just going to be v squared. And then here we have a 1 times v minus 6 times v. You don't really need the 1 in the front, but that v matters. So we'll leave that there. And we also don't need the 1s in the bottom anymore. So all my fractions are gone. So we're going to do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to distribute here. This one is a box multiplication problem. I'm not going to show my work for that, but I'm assuming you guys know how to do your box multiplication by now. And we have a quadratic on our hands. Um, when, when you have a quadratic, um, the only way you're going to be able to solve it is by getting everything on one side so that it equals zero. So let's do that really quick. First of all, though, I'm going to put these v's together to make it become 2v squared. And so now I want to move everything over to one side so it equals zero. So I'm going to move this over here. And I'm going to move the 6v over as well. That way both of these cancel, leaving zero over here. Leaving me with 2v squared minus 23v plus 30. And at this point, you can solve this equation either by factoring or the quadratic formula. And as I told you, every problem I gave you can be solved in either way, and I prefer the factoring method. So you would use the box method to factor this. Now I don't know, I'm just doing this in my head, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get this exactly right, but I'm going to give it a try. Oh, I think I got it. Okay. There we go. Got it. That works. And then you're going to set them both equal to zero, and solve. And once again, I don't see a no solution option, so I'm not going to bother doing the last step once again, which is checking my answer. So 3 halves is one of my answer, and 10 is the other one. So that's going to be option D. 
But if you do see on your test one of the answer choices as no solution, make sure you check it. Um, because even though you might have gotten this answer and your answer is there, it's possible the real answer is no solution if that option is available. So you want to check to make sure that that's the case. Um, another thing that could happen is, is that they might have an answer where you, they have both options available. But another one of your answer choices, like say option E, they might have only one of them. And that's possible because if you check your answers, it may turn out that this one wasn't a solution, but this one is. So you do need to do that last step um, to make sure that they're there. But in this case, they don't have anything like that. So I know it's got to be what we have there. But that concludes it. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. And we'll see you guys later.